Released by Caveat in 2005 on the PlayStation 2, Drakengard 2 would be retconned to take place directly after a mirror version of Drakengard A's ending in a separate timeline. Directed by Akira Yasui and written by Sawaka Notori and Fuminori Ishikawa, the game would have three possible endings, though only the first ending would have its story continue in additional official media and will be the one covered here. The story only gets larger from here, so let's cut it down to size with a recapitation. As the game begins, 18 years have passed since Kaim and Angela save the world as five seals bind the Red Dragon and thus prevent the destruction of the world. An order named the Knights of the Seal protect the seals, and for each seal, a special lieutenant among the knights acts as a guardian. Now, a young man raised by a blue dragon named Noe is the latest recruit into the Knights of the Seal, heralded as a savior. General Gizmore, leader of the Knights of the Seal, personally assesses Noe's strength and finds Noe's power is the real deal. Hierarch Sere recognizes Noe's victory, saying he reminds him of General Auror, the former leader of the Knights, who died three years ago and was Noe's foster father. Sere mentions many others were lost that day three years ago, including the former Hierarch Veridale, who created the seals and now protect the world, and Noe declares revenge for that day against their enemies is why he and his blue dragon partner Legna join the Knights. They are interrupted by news of a monster attack in one of the districts, and Gizmore deploys Noe, Legna, and Noe's fellow knight and childhood friend, Eris, to handle things. As they rout the enemy, Eris explains there are five districts, each of them desolate and polluted with poisonous air, and each the responsibility of the knights to secure. With Legna, Noe can channel their power together to strike fear and awe in the eyes of their foes, unleashing devastating attacks upon the battlefield. Within, they find prisoners begging for release, but Eris warns Noe they are former Imperial soldiers paying for the crime of trying to destroy the world. Noe wonders why there are people here at all, and Eris explains that each district there is a key that cleanses the air, and in this district, it's a flower blossom that draws on the life force around it. Noe protests the prisoners being used as sacrifices this way, but Eris hears none of it as they complete their mission. Returning to base, Noe learns he is only called a savior because of a prophecy foretold by Sere declaring him as such, though to be able to speak to dragons without a pack like he can is very unusual. Returning to Gizmore, he quickly deploys them again with Guardian Zangpo to clear his district of invaders, while Noe sees the other guardians Yaha and Hanch. Clearing the district of undead with an accursed fog, Noe wonders why the first district did not have a guardian, and Eris replies he went missing and no one knows what happened. Moving to check on the key, Noe once again objects to Imperial prisoners being used as fodder, though Mana, now grown up, steps forward to volunteer to make the deadly trek through the fog instead of the other prisoners. Zangpo agrees, but after a few hours, strange rumbling can be felt as the fog lifts, and the Guardian orders the Knights to investigate. From Eris, Noe learns the unimpressive lieutenant was made a Guardian because he gained inhuman power from entering a pact, as General Gizmore believes strength is everything. Arriving at the Flame Deus Key, Mana moves to destroy it to stop the suffering of her people, but Zangpo repeats that the key protects the world from a deadly poison. Mana shoots back the keys only protect the privileges of the knights, showing she is strong enough to easily fend off Zangpo on her own. Seizing this opportunity, the prisoners rebel as Noe and Eris strike down the uprising, but Mana edges out a win and succeeds in destroying the Deus. Both Mana and Zangpo fall after their battle, though the Guardian bursts into flame as well as Eris explains when a key is destroyed, so too is the Guardian tied to it, and the district is lost to the Knights. Seeing Mana still alive, Eris has her locked up, though Noe points out even though she caused the death of a Guardian, it was in self-defense of herself and her people. Eris ignores him, instead ordering all rebels to be slaughtered as they attempt to free Mana. Securing the fortress, Noe slips in to talk to Mana, who explains she destroyed the keys not only because her people were directly being sacrificed to them, but also because the knights only protect them to protect their privileged position. Eris catches them talking and informs them General Gizmore will be arriving personally to carry out judgment on Mana for her crime. However, Mana surprises all of them by requesting to be burned at the stake, and complying, Eris leans in to give her a farewell and smirks while gladly putting her to the torch. Unfazed, Mana then uses her magic to raise water from underground, dowsing the flames and creating a fog to cover her escape. Hearing her steal away an airship, Noe is ordered to catch her on Legna, who comments how women are often the cause of trouble if you're not careful, and chasing them is fruitless. To the side, Gizmore notes how problematically powerful Noe is with his dragon, just like Auror, and thinks he needs to do something about him soon. Mana eludes Noe's pursuit and he is called back to base, though while walking the streets, he observes the citizens are exploited for tribute by the knights, who indulge in their daughters otherwise. He also hears the citizens are glad Zangpo is dead, as in frustration at losing the sensation of fullness or taste while eating to his packed partner or free, he would vandalize their homes during dinner time. Meeting with Gizmore in private, the general offers Noe or his favorite drink, and after Noe accepts, Gizmore reveals three years ago he gave the same poison to Or before he faced the one-eyed man. 
The poison weakens Noe quickly, who is shocked to learn Gizmore murdered Orr as Gizmore mocks his naivety. Outraged, a strange power suddenly begins to emanate from Noe, turning his hair silver and pupils draconic, as he quickly closes the gap on Gizmore, cuts off his arm in a single swing. Before he completely strikes down the general, Eris enters, shocked to see what happened as Noe is just as confused at what is going on, turning and fleeing from the scene while staving off the poison. The knights are reluctant to declare their savior a traitor as Eris begs Noe to surrender and not make things worse, reminding him of his promise to always protect her as a knight. Noe reflects how when they were kids, he saved her life from a poison bite, and she was always more inspired to become a knight than he was, lamenting how she was maturing as a woman. Though he once promised to always protect her, Noe now says he cannot forgive Gizmore and apologizes while leaving, though Eris says she hasn't given up on him. Flying away with Legna, Noe overcomes the poison as the fugitives flee and Noe discards his knight armor. Elsewhere, we now see Kaim and Angelus as Kaim is glad to see one of the seals broken. Meanwhile, Legna's body evolves as dragons often do in dire circumstances, turning into a darker blue, almost black form. They think to return to their homeland, though Gizmore already predicted this move and is lying in wait, but Mana is also there, helping Noe slip away to her hideout. Noe thanks her for the help, though Mana replies she is about to go now and destroy the key of another district. Noe tags along as Mana shows him another village oppressed by the knights as they dam the river with the fortress and the key within, drying the valley below and leaving the village to starve on their own or get punished if they try to flee. Storming the fortress, Noe contends with Guardian Hanch, learning the woman was the one who prepared the poison for both him and Orr. Taking down her pack beast Kelpie first, who claimed her charm as its price, Hanch and the key are soon finished as water now flows again freely through the valley. Eris arrives, accusing Mana of controlling Noe with her magic, but Noe passes her by, telling her he is of sound mind and is choosing to seek answers to the many questions he has about the knights. Eris still blames Mana for the destruction of the second key, as Noe hears of another deserter of the knights and seeks him out. Following the lead to the city of Rust, the duo fend off bounty hunters, only to be aided by a masked man who turns out to be a man Noe knows named Yurik. He also used to serve under Orr, and was something of a big brother to Noe, and while he has little information on the districts, he warns him about a powerful one-eyed man with a huge sword lurking around. As knights encroach upon them, working together with monsters, Mana is frozen in fear as she spots a black garb berserk man easily assault the knights and splay their guts about, as images play in her mind from her childhood, knowing the bloodthirsty man to be Kaim. Noe wonders if the one-eyed man is the same one who killed Orr in battle, but Yurik suggests they withdraw for now. Legna flies them out as he tells them he picked up thoughts about another district, and Yurik recognizes it to be the one guarded by Yaha. Coming to her senses, Mana adds a citadel housing the key and employs its slaves as laborers when they're not being used as sacrifices. Slicing past the soldiers within and Yaha's illusions and traps, Yurik explains Yaha made a pact with the gnomes, paying with his luster, as Yaha claims he did so to try and attract Yurik personally. Undeterred, Yurik strikes him down as Yaha claims he still has feelings for Yurik, and Yurik admits before Yaha changed, they were indeed friends. At the same time, Angelus is regaining more of her senses as Kaim still takes care of her, and the group makes their way to locate an informant with information on the next districts they need. It turns out the informant is Eris, baiting them in with her trap, who is surprised to learn Yurik is alive after all and mad to see he too turned traitor. Her ambush is interrupted as Kaim enters the battlefield, and Noe is shocked to see the one-eyed man who killed Orr is the hero who saved the world 18 years ago. Mana begins to wither and Noe thinks to pull back for now as Eris follows him this time, claiming Mana is a witch who cannot be trusted. She reveals 18 years ago it was Mana who tried to destroy the world as leader of the cult of the Watchers threatening humanity, and Mana confesses that was true. Not waiting to resolve this now, Legna helps shoot down Eris, claiming the past is not so easily reconciled. Out of danger, Mana states Kai made her promise never to forget her past and to live on atoning and being hated by the world. However, she insists her mission to break the keys and save the people is not out of obligation, but her own choice. All the same, she leaves on her own, and feeling lost, Noe lets her go as Yurik says they should focus on the next district. Returning to the first district he ever visited that had no guardian, Noe finds Mana did as well, but also sees Kaim has captured her. Yurik faces down Kaim, claiming to have some unfinished business as Noe takes care of the knights that have stolen away Mana, only to find they took her to Gizmore. Claiming he's stronger than before, Gizmore duels Noe, admitting he was jealous Aura was once the leader of the knights despite having no pact. Noe wins the duel, driving Gizmore away as he soon rescues Mana, saying he doesn't care about her past as he chooses to believe in who she is now, swearing to protect her going forward. Fighting their way to the dais, they find Kaim there waiting for them, and Yurik clarifies he's waiting for him. Noe asks why, and Mana figures Yurik is really the missing guardian for this district. 
Yurik admits this is true, elaborating that during the attack on the Seal three years ago, he was defeated by Kaim and saved by Orr. However, Yurik fled and left a poison Orr to die, while he made a pact with a Reaper and paid his mortal body in order to survive. All the same, he's tired of running and wants Noe to destroy the key, telling him to strike down the Reaper when it enters his body to resurrect him. However, Noe is conflicted on this and instead charges Kaim on his own, and while he holds his ground in the duel, he is about to take a fatal blow from Kaim just as Yurik pushes him aside. Yurik dies, but the Reaper begins reviving him immediately, surprising Kaim as none of his heavy strikes can stop Yurik's immortal body. Relentless, Kaim succeeds in killing the Reaper within, and finally freed of his pack, Yurik uses his remaining strength to shove Kaim off the edge, sending him falling into the abyss. Dying a true death now, Yurik is laid to rest as the key disintegrates with him as Noe somberly leaves to learn where the last key is. Conveniently, Legna says he was just relayed the exact information they need, and heading there immediately, they are met by an overwhelming number of knights. Legna is shot down by cannon fire, separating the group, and he urges the duo to go on ahead to the key as he holds off the army by himself. Climbing the clock tower and crossing the red carpeted corridor, Noe is halted by Eris and Gizmore. Gizmore quickly clashes blades with the Dragon Child, but is surprised to be overpowered so easily. Losing the duel, Gizmore begins turning into a smoky shadow man, and as Noe prepares his finishing blow, Gizmore quickly grabs Eris and blocks the blow at the last moment. As Noe runs Eris through, Gizmore pulls back for now, leaving Noe to mourn his mistake. Eris is dismayed to see her loyalty rewarded with such treachery, telling Noe the key is an hourglass ahead, falling in his arms. Checking on Legna outside, the Dark Dragon is fine as he takes him to the top of the tower, where they are met by Sere. The Hierarch is delighted to see his twin sister again, but Mana ignores him, knowing he's not an enemy but isn't an ally either, spitting out that he always just watches and takes no action. Sere pleads with her not to break the final seal as it concerns more than just the knights, but his words fall on deaf ears. Finding the Hourglass Key, Shadow Gizmore is there as well, proclaiming there is no right or wrong in this world. You are either strong or dead. As they fight, Gizmore reveals he was a survivor of the Empire too, that we value power over ideals, and as he loses, Gizmore chooses to end things on his own terms, destroying the key and exploding, trying to take Noe with him. As Lugna saves Noe in time, the final key has been broken, and at the same time, the magic binding Angelus dissolves immediately. As her strength returns to her, she destroys the ruins that once hit her and lifts off, and back with the group, Sarah is appalled to learn they broke the final key. He admits that while it's true people were sacrificed to maintain them, their true purpose was to shackle the actual final seal, the Red Dragon. Dragons are much stronger than human goddesses, and so require more drastic measures to bind, and he tells his sister she just doomed the world again. Not giving up, Noe declares he'll save Mana and the world, heading out to meet the Red Dragon in a place called Sanctuary. As Angelus' hatred of humanity is rekindled, in her madness she brings devastation to everywhere she goes. Noe comments she looks more like a demon, and Legna evolves into a more powerful black dragon to rise to the occasion. Legna adds the red dragon's mind is broken, as Angelus explodes in rage, claiming she did not become the final seal for the sake of humanity, but for one man in particular, though she cannot recall his name and curses Verdele. Legna jabs that you cannot trust a human, but adds he hears a human calling Angelus somewhere, while Noe wonders what will happen if they were to destroy the dragon and the final seal with it. As Legna reveals the Red Dragon's true name of Angelus to Noe, they follow her to an isolated castle. Thinking it to be an old Union outpost, Noe is unsurprised to find Kaim there, but is still unclear in his objective, as he also attacked the keys in each district. Kaim does not reply, instead holding Noe back and even protecting him from Angelus' thrashing. Legna explains Kaim does not speak because his voice was his pact price with the Red Dragon herself, and Noe now realizes killing the Red Dragon would also kill Kaim too. Legna says Kaim now sends him a message confirming his wish to end the lives of both Angelus and himself, as the name Kaim now starts to return to Angelus. Dogfighting her in the sky, Noe and Legna end the Red Dragon's rampage as she falls to the castle courtyard and begins to remember things again. As she dies, she recognizes Kaim again, glad to see him one more time, as they share one last reunion together before she bursts into flames. Hungry flames now consume Kaim as well as he recalls their journey together fondly, and they are both happy to finally be together again, turning to ash and blowing away. Unsure now of what comes next, Mana has a sudden mental breakdown as Legna claims this is the beginning of the world's end. Above, the sky shatters like glass and falls to pieces, revealing a red storm above as time distorts and nightmarish phantoms flood the land. Not sure what to do, Legna suggests seeking more power from the Holy Dragon's ancient tomb in the sky, dredged up from the distortions in time. He elaborates that the ancient tomb holds relics and knowledge of the Holy Dragons who have survived crises such as this. 
Finding the lost tomb, they navigate past machinery not built by human hands as Noah hears voices sharing strange secrets, which Legna explains is the truth from the Book of Seeds. He hears how a weak man once loved a blind woman and was bound by a black dragon. The man then greedily entered a casket and became part of a union. The black dragon would gain enlightenment as well as a special child with special blood. The red dragon would become a pawn and the key to the new world. The man and the woman would become fused together in the casket, becoming a new breed of creation that would usher in a new era. When the Red Dragon's fury would end, a new pawn would rise and this woman would lead them to the new breed. Noe is not sure what the voice means by the new breed and Legna reveals it means Noe and tells him to listen further. The voice continues to share that the gods would use the abandoned woman again and she would meet the new breed, causing a turning point. It then mentions the Holy Dragons and the Nameless engage in an endless war and the dragons would exploit an artifact created by the Order of the Nameless. Legna translates this to reveal holy dragons created humans from the lives of what humans call gods as part of the plan to eventually make the new breed. Leaving with this revelation, Noe is not sure how this knowledge has made him stronger when he spots an airship belonging to the knights crash nearby. Checking for survivors, he is surprised to see Eris alive and she explains she was saved from the brink of death by Sere, who went on ahead to do something. At this time, Mana now becomes possessed by the gods again, speaking in an alien voice as Noe's strong desire to save her somehow has him entering her mind. Within her memories, Mana sees herself as a child when she was a tool of the gods and Noe finds himself chasing the ghosts of her past as well. Helping her break her mental chains, Noe frees Mana, returning her to reality as Era says she's made up her mind about something too, urging them all to go to the promised land. Along the way, Mana recalls how as a child she often tried to run away from Kaim, but each time he would catch her and punish her. One day, Kaim would be distracted by hearing of Angelus' fate and luring him into a trap she would maim his eye and jump off a cliff to try and escape. Though there was a river to break her fall, she would survive but lose some of her memory of that time, but she assures Noe she's here by choice now. Returning to the land where humanity was born, Eris explains Sari is there, preparing the sealing ceremony to restore order to the world, and when the Red Dragon died, a new goddess has awakened. Arriving, Legna urges Noe to follow him to the Bone Casket Relic created by the Nameless, but Eris says they need to first restore the seal with Sere. Mana says she'll follow which choice Noe makes, and Legna counters that Noe is not a human and his fate is to kill the gods. Noe rejects this, wishing to restore the seal and protect humanity first, but the Black Dragon scoffs that the Book of Seeds is not a prophecy but rather the unavoidable future. The Black Dragon then sounds the call for the Holy Dragons to rise up now as an army of Holy Dragons take to the sky, only to be fired upon by an army of stone golems waiting on the ground, led by Sere and the power of his pact. As the explosive battle ensues, Sere and his partner Golem meet with the group, explaining that dragons carry their history in their blood, so each one is driven to kill the gods and replace them to rule the world. Noe confirms he heard as such in the ancient tomb as well, realizing Legna's real motive in helping him this whole time was a means to an end. Dropping all pretenses, Legna attacks the group and forces Noe to the bone casket below, which Eris recognizes is actually one of the seeds of destruction from 18 years ago. Legna confirms this, adding that they intended to use this tool of the gods against them by having Noe evolve as a new breed within it, thus getting the power he needs to become their ultimate weapon. Against Legna's assault, Noe is no match for his former partner, but he tells Mana he is still driven to save her, prompting her to kiss him in the heat of the moment, which triggers his powerful transformation again. With a crest of light giving him wings, Noe awakens his new breed power, rising up as Legna evolves into his final white holy dragon form as well. As the two face each other, they pause to remember their long history together and how they consider themselves a sort of father and son. Legna extends one last offer to Noe to join him instead of fighting, but saying goodbye, Noe chooses to defy him and the Book of Seeds' his prophecies. Surpassing the strength of his father, Noe thanks Legna as he strikes him down and Sari confirms the other holy dragons are fading away. Wasting no time, Eris urges Sari to begin the sealing ceremony, revealing she is the new chosen goddess, much to Noe's dismay that for all his power, he could not save her. As the game ends, Eris reflects that the world is once again chained by the gods, with a temporary peace bought by one woman's sacrifice, and having no choice but to continue the cycle they fought so hard against. Mana looks optimistically to a future ahead of them regardless, and believes there will be a day where Eris can live a life as an ordinary woman again. Drakengard 2 has enjoyed the success of selling over 210,000 copies worldwide. This game may be rejected by most of the Yoko Taro fanbase, but let me know what you think in the comments below. If you enjoyed the recap, then leave a like, and big thanks to the patron and channel member pack members. Links are in the description for extra perks and ways to support the channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next battlefield.